And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. May be seated. Well, I thank you so much for coming out this evening, and I commend you for having having done so. Um, The first Monday Thursday service I ever went to in the Episcopal Church was when I first became an Episcopalian, and it just so happens that that Easter Sunday, that Easter uh, weekend, my mom, who was like me, well, that makes sense, uh, (laughs) lived her life in the Church of the Nazarene growing up, her father being a Church of the Nazarene pastor, had never experienced anything like uh, the worship that we do. And she and my sister came and went through the Monday Thursday service, and then the Good Friday service, and then the Easter vigil, and then we made them come back for uh, Easter Sunday as well. And, and, of course, they weren't totally sure everything that was going on, and yet they knew the story so well they could see how liturgy actually had this ability just to open up. Um, the, the way and the path of Jesus in a way that we get to participate within it. And this, of course, as you can see, and if you've been here before, is a, an incredibly participatory uh, service where we actually enact the washing of feet that Jesus did for his first disciples and commanded us to continue for one another. You know, before, uh, as I grew up, it was a wonderful church in so many ways, but we would go to church on Palm Sunday, and unlike here, we didn't read the Passion narrative. I, I don't know why. I was telling my colleagues the other day I'd leave every Palm Sunday, and for whatever reason, that, that church, they gave us a Snickers bar and, a, and an orange. And so, you know, that's what I thought when I, it was Palm Sunday, and the next thing you knew, you had a Snickers bar and an orange, and then it was all at Easter Sunday. And, of course, we knew that there were some things that happened in between there and that those things were quite big, but we never enacted them in our own worship life. We never got together any time in uh, Holy Week. And, and so again, I think it's so vital and important for us as Christians to make uh, this journey. And although, as you can imagine, uh, and as you well know, um, more people will be at some of the other services, particularly on Easter Sunday morning, um, the, the gift that you're giving yourself, in my estimation, is the one that my family felt so many years ago and allowed our faith, our liturgy, our traditions really to open up. As I've said each year, the way that these services are designed, and you'll notice this this evening, is that they really don't have a specific ending. Um, This service ends with uh, the Garden of Gethsemane being read. Uh, After we strip the altar, in other words, the party is totally over, and Jesus is to walk that next hard step into the garden and his betrayal. And then we pick up, of course, tomorrow at our services, and those services don't have a definitive end to them either because they then pick up and start ultimately on Easter Sunday morning with the vigil service before daybreak in the garden and throughout the Easter celebrations. So please do be a part of these things as much as you can, and I think that you'll find, um, like my family uh, so many years ago, that uh, our tradition really offers us a lot right now. We are going to do foot washing. Uh, Hopefully that's no huge surprise for anyone here. As I say each and every year, um, not anybody has to do this. We have this kind of saying that Episcopalians use that um, all may, none must, some should. And if you don't know where you are in that, let me encourage you towards the some should. Um, This isn't meant to be fun. As you saw Peter's recoiling from the idea that Jesus was going to do this act of service uh, for him, uh, we recoil from getting on our knees, from serving each other, from having something as intimate, and for most of us kind of as gross, as dealing with one another's feet. And yet, again, good liturgy invites us into 
an alternative world. And what I would say is that alternative world really needs to become more of what our real world is. Um, we like bombast. We like a bunch of chest beating in our world. We are forgetting how to be servants to each other. The reason this is called Monday Thursday, is Monday is a word that means command. This is command Thursday. And the command is what you heard at the end of the gospel that Whitney read for us. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. And what I would say is love for one another is not something that's just ever going to happen. We have to learn to do that. The more that you think about love not in a sentimental, passive way like we oftentimes generally so talk about in our world, uh, the, the more that you can get away with that um, and from that, the better in my estimation. And think about love for what it actually is that thing that's modeled on what Jesus did for his disciples. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He did things like this, and in doing so, showed them a new way to get on our hands and, and our knees, rather, uh, in service for one another. Each of us has a lot to learn in that regard. But the world, the very life of the world, depends upon us as Christians learning how to be like this. So again, none must, all may, some should, and I'll let you consider where you are in that. How it's going to work is like this. Those who wish to come up, there's no particular order you're going to do so. The choir is going to do so at the end. Um, but the clergy, other than me, some of you all may have seen that I caught a bug, and what I want you to do if you come up here is catch a blessing and not a bug. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this for the first time this year um, in order to not get anyone else ill. But um, we will wash your feet, and then as you come up, you wash the next person's feet. If for some reason you do not wish to wash uh, the next person's feet, which is by the way, kind of the deal, um, <laughs> then we, the clergy will be there for you and we'll, we'll step in um, and, and, and get, that, get that done. But I do hope that you'll be um, open to this. And if you would be so kind, it would be great if you could take off your shoes before you come up. It'll just save some time with the flow of the service. If you don't wish to come up, again, that's fine. Just ask that you pray uh, for your own way that you're going to live out this command of Jesus to love uh, more and more in this world that desperately needs Christians to love. I'm glad you're here tonight. The liturgy continues on page five. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I've given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you, my own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. And you may be seated until you're ready to come forward. <clears throat> 